I have a confession to make, I rode the Kawasaki D-820-13, long before its U.S. introduction in Palm Springs, California this week. It was on a test track in southern Italy during a new tire introduction, and despite the fact the track is not the Z-800 single quote S element Kawasaki builds the baby he as a street fighter ideally sweet for commuting your weekend blasts in the canyons I came back pleasantly surprised. I remember the spread of power was impressive, the completely analog transmission shifted with buttery smooth precision, the brakes never faded and the chassis was fluid and responsive. I wanted one but left Italy disappointed that I wouldn't be able to get my hands on a Z-800 stateside. Fast forward to today with the naked Street Fighter class gaining in popularity. According to Kawasaki market research, within the past five years, sales in the mid-size segment of the standard category have been growing rapidly, quicker, even, than the open class standards. It's easy to see why when the bikes like the NBA does the Brutale $812,798, the Copy Monster $821, $11,595, Suzuki GSX-S750, $7,999, Triumph Street Triple, $9,400, and Yamaha's FZ Duo the FZ09, $8,190, and FZ07, $6,990. All occupy a similar space. It's a crowded landscape to join, but Kawasaki realized it had just the weapon for the job, both in terms of cost and performance, in the $8,399 Z800 apps and it's been residing in Europe and Australia and New Zealand for the past two years. Finally, the little Z is coming to America as a 49 state model. For 2016. That's right. The Z800 NABs won't be sold in California, but Kawai reps stated a request has been made to Japan to make the bike 50 state legal ASAP. Nonetheless, the bike is here now, and while the engine has roots to the pre-2010 Z1000, which itself had roots dating back to the 1990s, a more accurate view would be to see it as the successor to the previous Z750, a motorcycle which, Kawasaki says, sold more than 160,000 units worldwide during its 10-year run from 2003 to 2013. Nuts and bolts calling it an 800 is actually doing the Z a slight disservice, as the BOHC in line 4 is 806 cc, the result of an increased bore over the 750, 71.0 mm versus 68.4 mm. Stroke stays the same at 50.9 mm. Compression ratio is a relatively high 11.9 colon 1, with 34 mm Kahim throttle bodies feeding the air slash fuel mixture. To help bolster mid range power, intake and exhaust ports are tweaked over the 750. Intake ducts grow in length, 41.5 mm from 36.5 mm, and the intake funnels themselves are changed. The two inner funnels are longer than the outer units. Exhaust headers 1 and 4 are connected as well as headers for cylinders 2 and 3, also in an effort to maximize torque. Kawasaki engineers also went through the trouble of updating or revising a plethora of components inside the engine. These include lighter pistons compared to the 750, bigger oil jets, and bigger crankshaft journals, just to name a few. Kawa Europe has the bike rated at 111 HP, with published reports online stating rear wheel numbers hovering just below the century mark. Chassis-wise, the 800 is based on the steel backbone frame of the 750 with reinforcement and rigidity added in the form of twin spurs that extend down both sides of the engine, visually dividing the head from the block. The two sides then connect in the middle, between the block and the headers. Of course, this is all cleverly disguised in minimal bodywork that accentuates the Z800 single quote S Street Fighter intentions. A cast aluminum subframe helps lighten the rear end, but the swigger is steel. As a result of the steel frame and swigum, the Z800 is a heavy bike, with Kawai rating it at 509.4 pounds wet. For reference, the 800 single quote S bigger brother, the Z1000, is rated at 487.3 pounds on both the Mo scales and the ones at Team Green headquarters. 
for a more in-depth look at how the Z800 matches up to some of its closest and not so close rivals, check out the spec chart later on in this story. Suspension duties were handled via 41mm KY before can rear shock, both ends only adjustable for spring preload and rebound damping. Unlike the Versys and Z1000, the Z800 single quote S shock is mounted vertically, though its reservoir is horizontal. Four box calipers are not radial mounts, but they are clamping on pedal type discs, 277mm in diameter on each side. A single 216mm pedal disc rests out back, squeezed by a single piston caliper. Abs, as the Z800 Abs names implies, come standard and is always on. Otherwise, the Z is void of all the other gizmos found on today's motorcycles. There's no traction control, quick shifter, power modes, or anything else. It's just man, or woman, and machine. Writing impressions since the Z800 Abs is not available for sale in California, the irony of having its intro in Palm Springs wasn't lost on anyone. However, the locale proved to be an ideal setting, as its close proximity to highways and canyon roads mimics what most users will use the bike for. Having pulled C1000 owners on their primary usage, Kawasaki learned that half of owners use their Zeds for commuting purposes, while another 39% primarily played in the twisties. Us, our ride would be a good chance for the 800 to shine in its natural environment. Since my initial encounter with the Zed was on a racetrack, its street manners were completely foreign to me. And since this was two years ago, some of the finer details had slipped my mind, too. Within the first few miles of riding I was reminded of the 800 single quote S healthy mid-range grunt. The Kawai pulls from idle to around 8,000 RPM where most street riders will spend the vast majority of their time on the Z-Power starts to taper once you get closer to its 12K red line, but with a quick release of the throttle and firm flick of the toe, the next gear is quickly engaged and the bike keeps pulling. Power delivery is smooth and there's hardly a vibe felt through the bars, but then again, I've been riding BMW's S1000XR for the past several weeks. When placed side by side with the paint mixer wedged in the Beamer's engine bay, the Z800 single quote S4 feels divine in comparison. It's hard to draw a fault with the 806cc4, other than a generic niggle we've expressed in the past about inline fours, their sound. Three cylinders wail their beautiful melody at full sung, the twins have their distinctive burble, and Yamaha's cross-plane for sounds downright mean when you get on it. The Z fails to inspire in quite the same way, but still has no trouble hustling down the road. Ergos are well sweet for the street rider who likes to hit the canyons on the weekend. The rider triangle is sporty, but not overly so. For my 5 foot, 8 inch frame the pegs aren't too high, the knees don't spread too far, and the upper body tilts forward just a little. Combined with the smooth and punchy engine, it would be easy to envision the Z as a practical commuter. It even has hooks on the license plate holder to attach bungee cords. If it were mine, I'd find a way to add a little more padding in the seat cushion. My nether regions got a little sore after about 45 minutes. Of course another way to get some blood flowing down there and forget about the seat is to hit the twisty stuff. Despite weighing a plain 509 pounds, the Z800 Abs handles high-speed sweepers with confidence and rolling direction changes fluidly, the bar is wide enough to provide a firm dose of leverage. It's during quick transitions where one really thinks about putting the Z on a diet. Though the suspension is only adjustable for spring preload and rebound damping, it felt well composed right from the start. Breaking power from the four pot Nissans is good, but I'd stop short of calling it great. I'd prefer a touch more initial bite. Oh I did appreciate the adjustable brake lever. Better late than never two years ago I was saddened by the fact I wouldn't be able to swing a leg over the Z800 state side. Now that I finally can, sorta, 49 state bike and all, I'm pleased to know my two year old memories haven't been clouded by time. The problem is that the competition has upped their game as well. Suzuki's GSX-S750 presence may be the closest challenge to the Kawai, 
their $400 price difference making them really well matched, but the excitement offered by the three-cylinder engines in the Triumph Street Triple and Yamaha FZ09 is hard to ignore. At $8,400, the Kawasaki G800 ABS is a great deal in the category and provides the many riders out there who hate the tech in today's bikes and outlet. We know you're out there. We read the comments section. It'll haul as if you wanted to, yet also be perfectly at home strafing through town on the way to work or school. We'll be bringing all of these contenders together to sort out who's tops on our list, but in the meantime no you can't go wrong with the Z800 abs.